Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. Dr. Kaisan Chaichana is a neurosurgeon and the director of brain tumor surgery at the Mayo Clinic in Florida. He joined us by telephone to talk about brain surgery, recent advances. And tell us about his research efforts to find new and better ways to treat patients with brain tumors. Welcome to the program, Dr. Chaichana. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. So, Dr. Chaitana, um, I know that uh, you're head of the brain tumor group down there, but tell us about your, uh, your work and how long you've been there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm relatively new to Mayo Clinic. I, was, uh, I did all my training at Johns Hopkins. I did my medical school, my residency, my fellowship in skull-based neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins, and I was on staff there for two and a half years before I came here in January of 2018. So I've been here for uh, almost a little over a year and a half. And why, uh, why Mayo Clinic? What attracted you to Florida and Mayo? Well, I like the whole Mayo um, mentality or the whole Mayo thought process where the needs of the patient comes first. But the biggest thing that's, a, that's a, a good thing about Mayo is that we are all salaried and we're all work as a team. So what that means is we're not incentivized to do, uh, to do very many cases. We just try to do what's right for the patient. So I like the whole... Uh, the whole mentality that Mayo Clinic has. And uh, what helps is the chairman of my department, Dr. Quinones, is a dear friend of mine who I worked with for several years, for almost 15 years at Johns Hopkins, and he came down here to lead our neurosurgery group, and so he was the Perfect. other enticing guy. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Q, we know him. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> what got you interested in brain tumors? Um, well, I actually worked with him as a medical student with brain tumors, and that's really what caught my eye about brain tumors. Initially, I wanted to do spine surgery, but Brain tumors are interesting in that there's certain tumors that are benign that you can really make a difference with surgery by changing someone's uh, natural history. If they have a brain tumor, you can almost cure them, but other tumors are cancerous, so there's a lot of research being done on those brain cancers. So it has a wide spectrum of different outcomes and different studies. So uh, the, the benign ones you can remove and mm-hmm. you can cure. The mm-hmm. cancerous tumors, can you cure cancer of the brain, primary cancer? Most cancers you cannot cure. We can we can extend the lifespan, but not cure them for most of the brain cancers at this point. The ones that are we can't really cure, for the most part, are glioblastoma and metastatic brain cancers. So you said metastatic. So that mm-hmm. means that there are certain certain tumors in other parts of the body that actually can spread to the brain through the bloodstream. Correct. Yeah. So whenever you have a brain tumor, there's always two varieties. There's ones that start within the brain and stay within the brain, and we generally call those gliomas. And there's other tumors that spread from elsewhere from the body and then go towards the brain, and we call those metastatic brain tumors. The most common sites are typically lung, breast, um, kidney, and skin. But I thought there was a blood-brain barrier. I remember back in, in medical schools, so well, that that's why it would ke- protect the brain. Yeah, that's why the chemotherapy Correct. has such a hard time getting up there. Exactly. So with the blood-brain barrier, it, it prevents a lot of uh, molecules and cells that are too large from penetrating the blood-brain barrier to protect our central nervous system. However, a lot of these cancers, especially metastatic brain cancers, they found a way to bypass that by opening up the blood-brain barrier through different mechanisms. And that's basically what my lab lab studies is, how these these cells break the blood-brain barrier. Yeah, it isn't fair. The other thing I've thought when I hear people, um, when you hear about someone's brain tumor is that someone will say it's located, you know, right up at, in the front or it's in the back mm-hmm. behind the ear or it's right in the middle. Um, is there a spot that is one that's worse than the other to have a yeah. brain tumor? Well, so there's the, the more, the, in general, the deeper the brain tumor is from the surface of the brain, the worse it is because the brain, how it works is it has a lot of white matter tracks or pathways that go from the surface deep down to the brain to the spinal cord where it controls our functions. So as you go deeper and deeper in the brain, a lot of the fibers are more condensed, and therefore there's a lot more valuable real estate deeper in the brain. So uh, how do most of these patients present who have uh, tumors, whether they're benign, malignant, or metastatic? Yeah, so nowadays most of the patients present incidentally with headaches where they get a headache and they get a scan because there's a wide wide availability of different imaging modalities like MRI and CT scans. Ten years ago, when it was not so widespread, it's usually when patients have seizures. But nowadays, headaches is the most common symptom. Ah, interesting. And uh, let's take a benign tumor, for example, a meningioma. Is that the most common uh, benign brain tumor? Yep, that's correct. And how long does it take you uh, to get that tumor out? And where are most of them located? 
Yeah, so most of the meningiomas luckily are on the surface, and so we call them convexity or they're along the convex of the skull. Um, so it doesn't take very long. It depends on if it's wrapped around structures, but a typical surgery ranges from one to three hours. But if these tumors are more deeply seated, like along the skull base, it can take six to eight to even ten hours. And, and how do you get through the skull? So we have a special, so it depends on where, but if it's on the convexity or the top of the surface, we have a special drill that drills a hole, and then we're able to remove the skull with the special drill, and then we always put the bone back with titanium plates. So but I, if it's on the, uh-huh. Yeah, no, sorry, go ahead. But if it's along the skull base, sometimes we can even access those tumors through the nose. Uh, anything that makes Tracy queasy, that's why I ask those questions. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying for the sake of video to just have a straight poker face on this one. But uh, we hear so much, many guests that we have, we talk about minimally invasive surgery for like heart surgery. Um, going up through the nose certainly is minimally invasive. Ooh. Is that, <laughs> so so to speak, is mm-hmm. that the direction that brain, uh, brain cancer surgery is heading? Well, so... Surgery through the nose is typically limited to uh, sur- uh, tumors along the skull base or the base of the skull. Um, so you can't access the top of the brain through the, through the nose because it's just too far and you have to go through too much real estate. So we have minimally invasive ways to go through the nose, to go to the skull base, above the eye, to go around the skull base, and even little ports that we do on top of the skull to go into the brain themselves. So I know that there are still some tumors that you just can't operate on, or you just can't get them all out. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you're doing from a research standpoint uh, for those patients. Yeah, so we're studying a lot of different things. Um, My lab uh, specifically, uh, as well as Dr. Q's lab, we're studying stem cell therapy. So a lot of these tumors, especially glioblastoma or brain cancers, even though you think you removed it all, there's cells that escape the the mass and where you can't see on MRI imaging. So we're trying to program stem cells, more, more so fat cells from one's own body, to program these cells to release different proteins to kill these tumor cells far away from the original tumor site. So then you would uh, give those cells into the bloodstream? Correct. And then they would hopefully cross the blood-brain barrier and, yeah. and kill the cancer? Correct, and then home to the tumor site. And that would be a better or might be a better alternative to, let's say, radiation or chemotherapy? Correct, because the problem with radiation, chemo, and surgery it's basically we, we try to remove all the cancer cells that we can see, but the ones that we can't see, we can't really pinpoint. Chemotherapy theoretically takes away those cells, but the issue with chemotherapy, it also can kill normal cells as well. But stem cell therapy is different than the vaccines that we've heard about over the past mm-hmm. years, correct? Yeah, so there are other labs on our campus that use vaccines or immunotherapy to try to program the one's own cells to kill those tumor cells just like they would in a, in a common cold or a virus or something like that. And finally, back to a minimally invasive, do you also call it robotic surgery when it pertains to the brain? Um, we don't quite use as much robotic surgery for brain tumor surgery. There are robotic surgery for what we call uh, deep brain stimulation. But right now, because you need the tactile feedback and all that, the robot is not as good. We have a robot that controls the imaging or the camera that we're looking through, but we don't have actual robot guided surgery within the brain at this point in time. In general, are brain tumors, and I suppose you really can't say in general, but are they just a pretty nice size lump or do they have lots of those tendrils that we hear about that make people nervous? Yeah, so the cancers, especially glioblastoma, has the tendrils. The other tumors generally form a lump. So that is also uh, when it, why it's advantageous over surgery to do stem cells or vaccines because then you can get all of those tentacles. Correct. Yeah, so some of the surgeries that we do here now, we use a fluorescent uh, uh, mechanism where the tumors metabolize the fluorescence and we can see it. But these, as you can see, these fluorescent areas are hard to get to um, without damaging normal brains. So these stem cell therapy would be an ideal way to treat these. That's cool. Yeah, well, <laughs> hopefully much of your research comes to fruition. You know, there's nothing simple about brain surgery and tackling brain tumors in difficult locations is a real challenge. And maybe someday there will be other methods that will help us. But Dr. K. So. Soren Chaichana and his colleagues at the Mayo Clinic in Florida are developing new and better ways to treat these patients. We wish you all the success in the world, Dr. Chaichana. Thanks for being with us. Perfect. Thanks for having me.